Tim Cook calls up Elon Musk. Good morning. Apple wants to buy Tesla. It's incredible. Elon's into it, but Vahabiki, one condition. I'm CEO. Okay, two conditions. Apple has to pay in Dogecoin. I'm kidding, I think, kinda. Tim's like, stay CEO of Tesla? Cool, 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 maybe. But Elon's like, nope, hard nope, CEO of Apple. So Tim's eyes roll 360 <laughs> off and then hangs up. I mean, hangs up. And all of this is only slightly less ridiculously hyped in a new book about Elon Musk as reviewed by the Los Angeles Times, reblogged by the Daily Mail, and then tweet bombed by Bloomberg's Mark Gurman and just burned across the internet at warp 10 plus speed of social tea spills. Now, I love, all caps love, fiery Tim Cook. If a business is built on misleading users, on data exploitation, on choices that are no choices at all, then it does not deserve our praise. It deserves reform. But calling up Elon Musk, dropping the F-bomb, and then just hanging up, that would be the mega warp fusion final digi-evolution form of fiery Tim Cook. And I'm just not sure he or we or anyone has seen that form yet. Now, Mark presented it as another perspective on this December 22nd, 2020 tweet from Musk. During the darkest days of the Model 3 program, I reached out to Tim Cook to discuss the possibility of Apple acquiring Tesla for one-tenth of our current value. He refused to take the meeting. And at the time, Apple was iterating away from the original Project Titan, the one under Dan Riccio, the one Johnny Ives' industrial design team had modeled actual cars for, that the original Project Purple iPhone engineering leads had returned to Apple to work on, that ideas like new languages, new bug reporting systems, whole new next, next like futures were being considered for just well outside the infinite loop of Cupertino. You see, Bob Mansfield was coming back and hell of a lot of changes were coming with them, including a huge turnover in that original staffing and in focus away from a specific end product and towards the autonomous systems in general that'd be required for a whole range of products to ingest, contextualize, understand and act and react on the world around us, on the world around them. So maybe the timing was just bad or the culture match wasn't right. Like the idea of Elon Musk running Tesla inside Apple like Jimmy Iovine was running Beats or outside Apple, the way FileMaker has seemingly been run for all time always, were just all non-starters. And who knows, because Musk never elaborated on Twitter and Cook, well- You're like a sphinx, I, I, I can't read you. That is until we get to this new book and what sounds like Mirror Universe Tim Cook calling up goatee Elon Musk in the exact opposite scenario from Musk's. But don't we fret now because Twitter was on the case. Mark quickly raised Carrie Swisher's April 5th, 2021 interview with Tim Cook, where she asked him point blank about Musk's tweet. And Cook said, you know, I've never spoken to Elon. Then Elon Musk didn't just raise, but he called, tweeting that the book managed to be both false and boring, and that Cook and I have never spoken or written to each other. There was a point where I requested to meet with Cook to talk about Apple buying Tesla, but there was no condition of acquisition proposed whatsoever. He refused to meet, and Tesla was worth about 6% of today's value. But then Seth Weintraub, founder of the 9 to 5 empire, went, all in, tweeting a photo of Tim Cook and Elon Musk sitting at a White House function together in 2016 with only an Oracle CEO, Safra Katz, between them. So is it impossible to imagine that Cook wouldn't have just good morning or that Elon Musk wouldn't have asked if Cook was long on Bitcoin or tried to suss out Apple's interest in SpaceX carrying their secret satellite network into the stars? But it's also possible that they just meant no substantive talks least of all talks about a Tesla acquisition. So real fake or just really fake? Let me know what you think. But Tim Higgins, who works for the Wall Street Journal and authored the book in question, responded to the brewing brouhaha saying, Musk was given plenty of opportunities to comment on this. He didn't. This anecdote comes from Musk's own account of the conversation, according to people who heard the retelling at the time. Also that, Apple was given several opportunities to comment prior to publication and decline. And for the record, they also never responded to my request for comment on the idea that Apple was gonna dump phones and shift hard into hot tubs and just go all in on Yo Siri bubbles. But it's not about me. Higgins finished by tweeting, Cook has said he's never spoken to Musk, which I take to mean not even to discuss Apple Store plans for Mars, which 
seriously for maybe the very first time in this video, remains Musk's primary mission and life's works. Never mind that he's advocated for our version of reality being a simulation, likely a simulation within a simulation 666 layers or something deep. In the event of catastrophic failure of hard drive Earth, Musk wants a redundant backup of data humanity on the next most capable server, Mars, and running Tesla, SpaceX, The Boring Company, basically everything that Musk spends all his time running, all focuses on bringing him and maybe humanity closer towards that just giant red planet goal. And being CEO of Apple, <laughs> that just seems way too double down on Earth, unless he really does know something about Apple's spaceship campus that we don't. So how did this whole sensational Tim Cook cussing out Elon Musk story spread so far, so fast, beyond just as a way to drama up some marketing for the book, or maybe exactly to drama up some marketing for the book? Well, I have an idea, but it's a real tangent for this video, so I'm gonna save it for the Nebula version, where I post all my videos, ad-free, sponsor-free, and many of them with extended bonus content, sometimes twice or three times as long, like event reactions, interviews, explainers, and more. And you can get a Nebula subscription bundled in for free when you sign up with today's sponsor at curiositystream.com slash Ritchie, or just click the link in the description. And right now, because you're watching this channel, you can get that bundle for 26% off, less than 15 bucks a year, less than the price of a fancy bistro burger for the whole entire year. And that includes their thousands of amazing documentaries and series, including this interview with Tim Cook, where he doesn't comment about Elon Musk at all, but does talk about maybe one day running for president, as well as all the ad-free and often extended videos on Nebula from MKBHD, iPhoneDo, TechAlter, Jordan Harrod, Ali Abdal, Real Science, Georgia Dow, and so many more for over 26% off, less than $15 a year. Just click the link in the description or go to curiositystream.com slash Renee Ritchie. And clicking on that link really helps out this channel. Hit the playlist above for more, so much more on all the drama with Apple, especially Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. Hit that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.